you ever have those people in your life that have changed your life, like for the better? Yeah, I've had a few. Yeah, we got to get them on the show. I, I, I've had a few too, and one in particular was uh, this guy that uh, um, that came that like I sent a sponsor me video to. He he was the team manager, and it was his team for like a huge team called Think Skateboards. And I sent my sponsor me video to like three different people, and he was one of the people that like took me under his wing, believed in me, and like changed my life. That's awesome. And um, I'm I haven't seen him in like ten years. Okay. And we got him to come here on the show right now today. So I want to welcome Greg Carroll to the couch. Yes. Yeah, man. Greg Carroll. Oh man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Greg. Yes. Punch to be here. Punch and I made a, a wish list when we decided we were going to do a podcast together. We said, okay, let, you know, we, we, we planned this before we did. We haven't even released it yet until we get everybody we want on it. And then we're going to release. And you were one of the top dogs. And he's like, I need Greg Carroll on this. I'm like, what's he up to these days? And he showed me your stuff. And I'm like, we need Greg Carroll. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah it's an honor to be here, man. So, Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. First, so first things first, Greg, where, where are you from? Like, What's your like just story like you, like you you grew up with Mike Carroll your Mike Carroll's older brother yeah you guys grew up skate like did you guys start skating at the same time yeah so uh, I was originally born in Ann Arbor Michigan my dad was uh, going to school to get his doctorate in music and my mom was a graphic illustrator for all the uh, medical books for the college I guess or something and then we moved back to San Francisco because my mom had a embroidery business with her parents. It's all custom embroidery stuff and like her, some of the heavy hitter stuff. She did like a lot of the Hells Angels stuff, a lot of the oh, other wow. motorcycle stuff, all the low rider clubs, all their jackets, all the patches for the, you know, HAs and everybody. But a lot of schools, all the, um, you know, like Letterman jackets and stuff like that. But uh, my parents split up when I was eight and that was devastating. And then, I don't know, that was probably 1970. 78 something like that and, and then uh somewhere around that time i saw i think it might have been skateboard madness that movie that movie skateboard madness and it was just like a quick clip maybe it was Dwayne peters doing the it looked like a capsule or something skating in a capsule you know? the clear one like yeah, the clear, clear thing yeah, bugged me out i was like yeah oh, you know, that's, i fell in love with skateboarding my, my mom's brother was a skater from San Francisco. They would bomb down Sloat Street, and I was like, "Make me a board, get me a board." He's like, "I'll make yeah. you one." So he never made me one, but he showed up with this USA Marina like pink banana board, not pink, but yellow <laughs> banana board. You yeah. know, typical <laughs> shit. I never got to ride it. I think my mom took it and like hit it or something. Oh wow! So I don't know, man. Maybe this is where my my initial entrepreneur mind kicked in, where I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna save all my money. So I started cha saving change. I had a Folgers coffee can, and I filled it up to the top, and I was like, this has got to be enough. you know. And there's a uh, toy store called King Norman's down in Westlake in Daly City where me and Michael grew up. And I went in there with my grandfather, and I put the can on the table. I said, I want that right there. And it was a Veriflex flexible flyer, the one with the big eagle on Veriflex, it. Veriflex, nice. Yeah. And I just skated every day, dude. And then all of a sudden, one day, I'm riding down the street, and then uh, um, try to go up the curb. And the, the truck broke, and I was like, shit. So I didn't get to skate, dude, again until probably, like, uh, I'd say I started skating again. My cousin was skating a lot with his buddies, and I was like, holy shit, this is dope. Yeah. You know? And then he wound up giving me a hand, hand me down board. I think I might have been, like, eighth grade. And I remember this kid, Willie Malari, was skating. We, you know, I don't know when you were kids, you do tandem where you're like sitting down, your legs cross yep. the other guy's legs, yep, and you're doing you like, do. I don't know what the hell it's called, but we were doing that. I always call those like the tandem hill bomb kind of yeah, thing. Something yeah, something crazy, you know. And me and Mike <laughs> lived up on this huge hill in Daly City on, on South Mayfair, and the next street over was Southgate. And by the time I was in like, I think it's freshman in high school, I was like, you know what? This is, I want to do this. You know? This is it. And this I met these something. two brothers, Teddy and, and uh, Eddie Watala. They were skating too. And then this, I don't remember this other dude's name is Todd or something, but he was like this older dude. Maybe he was a senior and I was a freshman. This dude would bomb the hill. 
standing up. But I was like, this dude is nuts, bro. Because we'd go down, and, you know, you cut off the bottom of your feet because you got your feet yep. stopping the board or whatever. Yep. But by the time I was a sophomore, yeah, I was a sophomore, and I was like, you know what? This is my shit. This is what I'm doing. And I remember I shaved my head. I had long hair, and I shaved my head, but, like, punkered, like... So, uh, this is my shit. This is what I'm doing. You you weren't into, like, the, the school sports or any of that stuff. <sighs> no, dude. I was... <laughs> I used to get made fun of on the basketball court. They're like, come on, Kara, what the hell are you doing? They throw the ball at my head or like, you know, <laughs> you're like, pick fuck on me. this. Like, you know, yeah. I was like, whatever. I mean, I got into soccer a little bit. That was fun. But nothing, you know, nothing that I was really into. Definitely not into football, you know, but skateboarding to me was like, I don't know, the music, the culture. You caught the bug, dude. I caught the bug. And then by the time I was a junior in high school, or maybe it was a sophomore, junior, uh, me and Mike somehow linked up with. I don't know, we were going, actually, we were going to, to Concrete Jungle Skate Shop. And my brother was in, like, seventh grade. And they would have, uh, Bryce Knights would bring his jump ramp out to Golden Gate Park on Sundays. We'd skate Bryce the Knights, dude. Yeah, dude. See, I never knew Bryce in the skate days. I only knew Bryce as a photographer. Oh, no, dude. So, so the Bryce fact that Rick, he was a bro. skateboarder, like, that's we can get into fucking Bryce, amazing. Dude. Bryce is one of the coolest dudes on the planet. <laughs> oh, I know. He, He's BK, dope, dude. dude. I remember that seeing him. out so. big time. I right. remember seeing his board all the time everywhere. Heck yeah, dude. So they would do, they would bring a, their ramp to Golden Gate Park, and I was like, I got inspired by that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a skate jam. So we did a skate jam at my high school. We did one at uh, Fernando Junior High. And then all of a sudden, dude, it was like 300 kids showing up, just like this crazy skate jam. And it was like. And they all had skateboards? Like, all of them. Damn. Skateboarders. There were skateboarders. <laughs> but then there was like jocks, and there was chicks hanging out. And we were just like. All right, this is the shit, dude. And then people from like, I went. We, I went to Westmore High School. People from Jefferson High School would show up. People from South City would show up. And like South City had this like YMCA where they they would have like an indoor basketball court, but like jump ramps, wall ramps, like slider bars. We're like, dude, this is dope, right? So Whoa. I was like, I'm doing this up there. So then all of a sudden, dude, one day I look over, dude. There's Bryce Knights, bro. Tommy Guerrero shows wow. up at our skate jam, dude. I was like, I won. <laughs> this is it. Like I made it, dude. And so you already knew who Bryce I and who Tommy Bryce were was. from I, the from Thrash or something. No, I, knew, Mags? I didn't. I didn't really know who Bryce was much except for the Mags. Tommy, I knew because Future Primitive, mm. and that was like me and Mike would just study Tommy every day, bro. That was like, oh my god, dude, look at this dude. And then funny thing about Tommy, like you know that Sacramento contest that he won. It was like street style. You know, Gons was doing a bunch of stuff like. In San Francisco, my uncle worked at this place called Acme Surplus, and they had Jordans. Like, this is what put Air Jordans on the map for skateboarding. He would actually sell the Jordans to all these people and, and all these skaters, but also the dudes from the hood and everything. And somehow I figured out, like, okay, I got what I got. Somehow I talked to Tommy or something, and I was like, hey, dude, you know, I wear, you know, you wear Converse. Like, you want to get some Converse? He's like, yeah, I want metallic, like, I don't know, it was like, almost like metallic gold leaf, but it was like shiny shoes or something. Yeah. Like, I was like, this dude's on some like weird fairy <laughs> stuff, right? Like, it's Tommy Guerrero, so whatever. Yeah. So my uncle got him the shoes, and I remember going to Sacramento for the contest, dude, and I was like, yo, Tommy, dude. And he was like, what? Oh, I don't know you if you remember. Presented this. the shoes, dude? Yeah, I gave him the shoes at the contest, and that's the contest. Was that he, he won. stoked? He was super hyped, dude. I was like, fuck oh, yeah, dude. dude. I, sick, dude. I wonder if he said it in a way to be like, I'm going to just make up some crazy shoe thing. And if this guy can pull yeah. it, then I'll be pumped. Probably, dude. And, Probably. You, and you did. You're like, all right. Yeah. You so, wanted the gold ones. Here they are. <laughs> yeah, so dude. this whole time where you were, when you were like caught this skate bug, your brother was with you. Yeah. he. Started, you brought him along because yeah, he, he was, he, I mean. Just like how I used to drag yeah, my brothers yeah, along. Yeah, exactly. My brother was with me everywhere I went. Like, it was like, I mean, we grew up in this time where there's no cell phones. There's Is that like because you kind of became, like, the father figure? Yeah, yeah. Damn. So it was like, and I was like, this is, this is my my brother. So, like, everybody had to accept the fact that he was going to be rolling with me, whether it was to skateboarding or a party or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then... <laughs> he went to, with you to their parties, and you're <laughs> like, dude, just... Bro. Yeah, we get into the Barcadero times. So <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, but what happened was... My cousin floated us his hand-me-downs, and eventually, you know, we, w we went to Concrete Jungle. My brother started getting boards, and Jake Phelps 
was always a fucking dick. Everybody knows that. Dude, every he time I went to Thrasher, asshole. Jake Phelps would be like, oh, the circus is in town. Yeah. What a fucking yeah. dick. Oh. Just, but then he would that. respect you. He would respect you if you, if you got a picture in the mag because he's the editor. He's yeah, going to put you in. Yeah, but, but he would fuck with you. Yeah, but back then, he wasn't even part of the mag yet. Oh, he wasn't? <laughs> nah, nah, he was just a dude who worked at a skate shop, right? <laughs> so anyways, he would talk shit. But then there was one day, I remember he was like, I guess he was at the park, at Golden Gate Park, and he saw how good my brother was. Mm. And Tommy was there. My brother was snapping head high all these off this launch ramp, and all these dudes are like, hey, who is this kid? So Jake told us one day, he's like, you're going to go skate with this dude, and it was Phil Chin. Who was like, Phil Chin. Phil Chin. He's a Chinese skateboarder from San Francisco, Christian Asoy style, but on the street. Oh, wow. Like, nice. you know, Nollies, people making up, you know, doing Nollies. This dude, would call him, we called him Chinese Ollies because he was the only one. I who, remember them calling him Chinese Ollies. Yeah. yeah. It was him. Before a Nolly. Yeah. Chinese Ollies. Yeah, Chinese Ollies, bro. So it was him. <laughs> so we went out skating with him. <laughs> Holy shit. And then the, the team evolved, and it was like um, a bunch of dudes. I mean, I remember, like, I think Mickey Ray's was on there. This other dude, uh, Sh- Schroeder, was on there. Danny Sargent, Sean Martin. And then next thing you know, dude, we're all skating around San Francisco with, like, Danny Sargent. Sean Martin, and I was like, yo, these dudes are off the hook. And they skated how I kind of skated. It's like slappies and wall rides they, and all this it, stuff. It almost feels like they're, they're the ones that kind of taught you how to skate San Francisco. You know what no, I mean? No, they weren't like, from San Francisco. Tommy Guerrero is the one who showed us through the video of, like, you can bomb hills. This is how you have style. This is what you can do for wow. all these. Like, Mike was like, and Mike, I think at the time, we didn't know what OCD was. But this dude would study. Watch videos. the videos over and over. That's like my, like, my buddy, you know, Tim, Tim O'Connor. Yeah, used yeah. To do he that. would study the videos. The next thing you know, he's going out and he's just ripping, dude. And we're just like, oh, my God, dude. Then he's like, I think it was seventh grade or eighth grade. He gets his school picture and he's wearing his Concrete Jungle shirt. He got sponsored by Concrete Jungle. And I was like, cool. <laughs> but simultaneously, right around that time is when Mike Trenaski comes up. And Mike had to quit Concrete Jungle to get on 8th Street. Mm. Right? So 8th Street is just like. It's shackle me not or whatever. So Mike person. Ternaski was the team manager of 8th Street? No, he was the owner and slash team oh, manager. Okay, he shit. was just like, back then it was kind of like everybody wore different hats, right? So Mike gets on 8th Street. I'm not on 8th Street. But I, I, there was like something happened. We had to go to Arizona. I don't know if it was a contest or what, but I remember me and Kit Erickson, rest in peace, are skating with Matt Hensley on this bench. And Kit's like, yo, this is it, dude. We're, on you know, the 8th Street you days. You got to get on it, bro. Let's get on it. And Kit's doing like kick flip back. Or no, Matt's doing kick flip backside tail slides. Kit's doing something else. And I was like, oh, my God, dude. I don't even know how to do a backside. I can't do backside good. So I was like, you know what? Frontside 270, Ollie, backside tail slide. Uh. And Mike Trenaski was like, hmm, okay. But I didn't get on 8th Street. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, right? Wow. I was like, oh, man. But Kit got on. Yeah. Right? And then it got into this thing where, like, next thing you know, I'm hanging out with Ron Allen. Ron Allen's like dude, you're going to ride for me. Was Ron Allen was an Oakland head. He was in Oakland. Okay. Yeah, because we used to go skate Oakland Tech a lot with uh, me, Javante, Rick, Rick Abiceta, Javante Turner. And I think right around the same time, Jake Phelps introduced us to uh, Max Schaff. Yeah. Just, just to let everyone know, the people that Greg is naming right now, like Rick Abiceta, <laughs> Ron Allen, who else did he name? Kit Erickson. Kit Erickson. Mike, Matt Hensley. Matt, these people were like skateboard icons and legends, legends now. Yeah, like legends. legends Straight dude. up. Still yeah. are. Still. People who actually created this so many skating with style in, in the culture and everything. They're yeah. definitely some of the kings of the culture contributing into it. Yeah, for sure. So next thing you know, I'm riding for, for uh, Ron Allen. I'm still in high school. So I'm riding Ron Allen's board. He's getting me street shadow goings because I was... Riding thunders and spitfire. Goal wings. I get on, I get shit. I get I get goal wings. Street shadows were like magnesiums and then OJ wheels and I'm just like on in heaven, dude. I'm like, oh, oh my yeah. god, dude, this dude's the best. And I remember it was maybe nineteen eighty seven, something like that. And it was New Year's and his birthday's right around New Year's or it's on New Year's or something, and he's like he's twenty eight years old. And then the next year he's twenty eight years old. And the next year he's twenty eight years old. I said uh, and I was like, Yo, how old is what? this dude, bro? Dude, black don't crack, dude. Dude, nah. <laughs> not, that, that, dude, dude. that dude is he's, like, clo- I think he's 60 or something now. 
But back yeah. then, I was like, yo, this dude's got to... He, he's older. Dude, when I met him... he's ripping, dude, still yeah. to this day. I love... Without Ron Allen, I probably wouldn't have been, been where I'm at. But also, too, simultaneously, even... Actually, before Ron Allen, it was FTC. Javante said, hey, dude, got me, Rick, and my, and, Fonte, and my brother. Shit. Hey, dude, this dude Kent from FTC wants to start a team. Da, da, da. I still have the printout of like the original team. It's me, Javante, Rick, and Nick Lockman, and my brother. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, dude, so what is this? What is this? How does this work, man? You like, you can get us boards? He's like, yeah, I can get you any board you want. I was like, and at the time, dude, I was like, Alva. Alva was my shit. Bill Danforth, everybody knew Greg Wise, Bill Danforth board. That's it. Nothing else. <laughs> Thunder trucks, Spitfire wheels, or OJs or whatever. And then it was like, I was like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah, dude. So now we're on this team, and Kent's super cool. And his mom, Kim, is bugging out on me and my brother, like, wait. You guys live alone? I'm like, how'd you know? How do you know about that? Right? You know, so I was like, yeah, you know, but we can't tell anybody because we don't want CPS coming in, yeah. taking us away. Like, we still had the house. My brother was pro, you know, I was, I think at the time I was like, this is a couple years later, I was like 17. My brother's 14, just turned pro. And Fucking said, pro at 14. Watch this, dude. I'm, I, it's just funny, man. So I'm one day, like, and this dude is just like, we don't know shit about checks and money and bank accounts and everything and i walk in the kitchen and i'm like is this for real fifteen thousand dollars dude for one fucking month of board sales and i was like yo this kid is chilling bro so i was just like and, wow and that's like coming from the gutter to like just yeah, like, dude yeah i mean we 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 didn't grow up i mean we're at the time you know 70s 80s middle class single mom struggling you know, and my mom left when I was 17. My brother was 13 or 14. Right after he turned pro, she was like, peace. You know, so then that was like time to learn how to fend for ourselves and survival mode. Survival mode. It's like, you, yeah, I mean, I remember Sam Smythe talked about this in some, I don't know, maybe it was the world video or something. He said something about like, yeah, you, you go to the Carol's house, like you're not eating their food. You know, you're not going to go get a box of cereal and eat their no. food. It's like, nah, 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 dude. Because Greg, you know, he's like, yeah, Greg ran a tight ship. He's like, yeah, dude. Because like, to me, we didn't have parents to buy us the food. We didn't have parents to take us around, do this and this and that, or regulate the kids coming in. And then our house was a halfway house. I'm like, straight up, dude, I had Sean Sheffy living with us for a long time. I stayed there. You stayed there. <laughs> You know, a lot of people stayed in that house, man. And it was like, but it was like, that's how it was. And I feel like, I think you even lived with me a little bit over in, in Patrol Hill when yeah. I lived with Dave, you know? And it was like, to me, it was like, that was normal. How long did you, how long did you have this house for? That was the it's childhood house. I was there from, Greg. Uh, we moved in when I was uh, three. Yeah. And I moved out when I was 23. Dang, 20 yeah. years. Yeah, and then they kept the house, and then this is a crazy one. My mom, I think it was two years later, 1993, February 3rd, my mom calls me up and says, your brother's got to get out. You got, you guys got to move out. And I, and I was like, hmm, um, okay. I already moved out a couple years ago, but Mike's still there. When do we need to move out? She said, this weekend. This is Thursday. Wow. I'm like, what the fuck? And I was like, you know what? You're fucked. Don't ever talk to me again. So I hung up the phone, called his, his girlfriend, moved my brother out. Then in, it was August 6th, 2020, 2010. No, 2011, 2010, yeah. Get a phone call. Your mom's husband killed himself in the house. You got to go help her out. Whoa. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, nah, that's, that's not No, artist. thank you. Yeah. You know? And then it got, you know, I don't know how heavy you guys want to get, but we can bring it back to some comedy in a minute. But it was heavy. I know I, I, I was like, no, I'm not doing it. You know, I was talking to my uncle. And then uh, it turned out where I, that was a Thursday, f Saturday, and I went up and sat in a Native American church, teepee ceremony, and the medicine hit me real hard, you know, and told me that I needed to go help my mom. This is the crazy one. This is fun for part. Yeah. Ten years prior, I'm in New York. One of my first times, probably when me and you were out there. My friend Brandy says, oh, we're going to go talk. You know, I want you to get a reading from this Brazilian like, witch lady. She's going to do a reading for you. I was like, what? Okay. I'm not into this shit. Like, you're bugging. So, But anyway, <laughs> I go to this lady's house. 
She's got dead chickens and all this weird shit in her house. Like, freaked me out. Dead chickens. But shit. I couldn't understand a lick of what she says other than your life purpose is to save your mom's life. And Jason Ponch, I was like, I don't even talk to this lady. What, what are you talking about? Yeah. Fast forward 10, 15 years later, here I am. I saved my mom's life. Because her dude at the time killed himself, killed himself. in the house. Yeah. And that's the there. dude who shattered my family, who... Basically, you know, he broke my nose, threw my mom around the house like a rag dog, you know, just dismantled everything. And, and in that process of going back and helping my mom, I couldn't get his energy out. This is, I'm already starting to do ceremony work. I'm already doing energy clearings, you know, on pe for people. But this is where I learned. It was like, I called it shamanic boot camp. Yeah. Learn how to clear a house. Oh, wow. For three years, I couldn't get this dude's energy out. So I was like, holy shit, man, this is insane. Talk to all these other elders. They're telling me what to do. Can't figure it out. And then one day I, I go and I sit up in this ayahuasca ceremony. I get doctored really good. That's on Sunday morning. Monday I go to walk out the front door. There's a closet. Here's a, here's a front door. Here's a closet. Spirit says, look in the closet. I said, there's nothing in there. Look in the closet. I look in the closet. All the way in the back corner, there's a burgundy velvet bag. It says Dugan Mortuary. It's the dude's ashes. Oh, so I had Mom to take kept his ashes, kept his ashes, bro. And I'm the one who had to take him down to Thornton Beach in San Francisco. And I released him into the water and that clean and prayed house. for 45 minutes when a raven came. <laughs> I put the tobacco on the top of the guy's ashes yeah. and the raven came and sat with me for 45 minutes. So that at that point, I knew the ravens were my allies. And, and now like, you got another raven right next to you. <laughs> exactly. What's up, raven? <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Thank you for your help. What a, what a yeah, story. So wild, man. man. Yeah. So that's it's what, crazy that you felt this energy, but had no idea for three years that this dude's ashes oh, yeah. were just lingering. Insane, just bro. Just eating you up, dude. Yeah. But I learned so many different modalities on how to clear houses. So now I, I clear houses for people all the time. Mm. You know, up in the Bay, I just did some crazy $22.5 million estate over there in Malibu. Or places over here in Hollywood. And it's, it's fun, man. So. Let's, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. So yeah. you, I was reading that you, you, you were one of the dudes that started Venture Trucks. Right? I didn't start Venture Trucks. It was started by Fausto and Eric. And then their first team manager was Steve Rocco. Yeah. And then from Rocco was Keith Cochran. Keith, right. good old yeah. Keith. So how I, how this this is this is pretty fun. So I'm riding for A Street, and at the time it was super fun at first. And all of a sudden it was like, I mean, you guys know that the team just got blown out. Yeah, yeah. And the boxes started showing up. And all due respect, I started getting John Saunders vertex, and I was like, all right, <laughs> nah, I'm cool. <laughs> were vertex different? Oh, <clears throat> yeah. oh yeah, I do. They were weird. Like what? Like they're wider. <laughs> they're wider. He had a pointy nose and like huge tail and i was just like I, I can't skate this man so i just like you know what i quit a street but at the time javante was skating with thebo a lot so javante's like yeah i do let's go skate with jim i was like all right so um we start skating with jim and then jim's like i'll give you the boards dude and i was like okay you know and i didn't know if that meant like i'm gonna ride for jim thebo or he's just gonna flow me a couple boards every once in a yeah. while but he gave me he gave me this noddest deck and i, I loved it and then he actually is one person who taught me a, a valuable lesson. This is going to be funny if he watches this about me being greedy at the time. He had a stack of these. I don't know if they were speed wheel stickers or something, but it was like a chick and she's super, you know, whatever. Yep. And whatever. And I was like, I was like, oh shit, I can get that sticker and I'm going to put his logo over here. And I made, you know, back in the day you do sticker jobs. Yeah. I was like, he's like, all right, dude. And he gave me like four or five stickers. I was like, can I get some more? He goes, no. I was like, why? Dude, you got a whole stack. He's like, it doesn't matter if I have a stack. It matters I just gave you that. And what if I give everybody, you know, what if I give you all this and I can't give anything, to, you know, all the other ones to somebody else? I was like, word. Yeah. All right, I get it. <laughs> right? And I was like, thanks, Jim. So then a few months later, I'm, I'm in Pacifica and I'm with my brother and a couple other dudes and we're skating a mini rant with Eric J. You know, and Eric J is ripping you know, but Keith Cochran shows up with one of my childhood friends, uh, this guy, Dean Coppola, who's my childhood best friend, Greg Lucero's cousin. And at the time, Keith just bought into Dogtown, right? right? Keith's, Keith's mom was dating Eric Swenson. Keith, I think he worked at the mailroom in Thrasher or something. And they, when Fausto and brought uh, Jim Muir up to, to SF, he bought in to Dogtown. And Dean says to Keith, he's like, why don't we get 
Greg on the team. And Keith's like, you can see him kind of tripping because when I was younger, Keith was in Concrete Jungle and I, I gave, I wanted, I was talking to Jake about sponsorship videos or whatever and I got, I got a tape, man. I want to send it to Alva or whatever. And Keith's like talking shit to me. I was like, maybe I'm better than you, fucking asshole. <laughs> you know? And this is the time when Keith had all the chains and he was like, you know, yeah. doing his thing or whatever. And I was just funny, man. But then Keith's like, all right, if you go up to Oregon with these dudes, it was like, and you know, remember back in the day, NSA regionals and yep. all that kind of stuff. So we went up to um, Portland, I think it was. It was me. This got to remember, dude, I'm an H Street dude. Getting in a van with Dogtown guys. This is... Uh, this is this is early. This is late 90s. I mean, JJ late 80s. Rogers... Wade's uh, Wade Spire, Spire, John Cardiel. Uh, I forget who else was in the car with this. Maybe Jeff Tolan or something. I don't remember, dude. One other dude because they all their boards just got yeah. reissued again. Jim just reissued all those dudes. Board. I'm like, these dudes were on Dogtown? Like, this is yeah. bad. But this, this is right before Cardiel turned yeah. pro. I think yep. Wade wasn't even pro yet. But we all get in the van together, and I'm like, oh, my God, dude. And I'm just like... But they were hella cool because I remember Wade from back in the day at Embarcadero. He came down with his leather jacket and he's like all in the opposite way off the Gons channel. Yeah, he went the opposite way and went ate it off it over the garbage can. And Cardio was Cardio. So anyway, I go to the contest and I'm like, oh my god, dude, I'm fucking uh, like super <laughs> nervous, bugging out. Yep. But then I'm like, okay, you know, remember when Hensley could do that thing where he grabs the nose and he spins his board 360, you know? Yeah. Like a 360 varial thing like underneath you. And I did a bunch of other tricks and I actually placed 16th, which is like right at the cutoff. <laughs> so I get on finals. Dogtown. <laughs> and then with Dogtown, it was a trip because I was like, yo, these dudes are nuts, man. Like, you know, this is, these dudes are gnarly, right? So I was like, I got to step my game up. But that summer. Gnarlier than the 8th Street dudes? <laughs> dude, like, no, like gnarly as in like, punker like okay. aggressive like this just is way, wild this way is way spire ben Cardiel. schroeder dude john cardiel <laughs> jay west like all these gnarly dudes it's a different breed different yes. breed like a street's like just like us dude just like just normal king you know like <laughs> whatever but then you get through these dudes and they're just ragers because i remember seeing them at a contest my brother entered in this arizona like mini ramp contest my brother won and uh Ben Schroeder and all these dudes are raging, partying, and my my dad, my dad's there, I'm like super nerd, like music dude, and he's like, oh my god, who are these guys? This is insane. They shouldn't be drinking. I'm like, dad, shut up, <laughs> leave them alone, <laughs> right? But anyway, so it's my high school summer, and uh, I, I'm on Dogtown, and this is super funny, man. Keith walks up to me at this contest down in. Um, I think it was Salinas or something, and because I remember Justin Gerard was there, and I was like, "Yo, Damn, this dude Justin. is fucking insane." New Deal, ripping. Yeah. This is pre New Deal. This is Dogtown, just oh, like wow. rhymey dude, chain wallet. Reminded me of Matt Hensley, like little dude, just <laughs> rah. Right. Keith walks up to me, and he's got uh, Fausto with him, and maybe Eric, and I don't know who these dudes are. I'm just a street kid from Embarcadero, like not knowing nothing, dude. And then he's like, "Hey, man, you know, I'm riding Gold Wings." And then Keith's like, yeah, dude, you know, would you want to be the team manager for Venture? I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> fuck no, those trucks are garbage. And he and he used to see in his face, he's like, because Fausto and Erica standing right there. And he's like, well, uh, what about Indy? And I was like, I don't know, man. I don't like the way they feel, man. And he, they're just like tripping on me. And because and I'm like loyal to Dogtown, dude. I'm riding for, for I mean, to Goldwing because I'm riding... The, the Hogan brothers are hooking me up. Love yeah. me, bro. You I mean, you're yeah. getting boxes from, from Goldwing, dude. You're getting, like, four sets of trucks. Like, that's how I learned how to pack boxes from those yeah. dudes. So, anyway, so, Keith's like, well, why don't you come down to the warehouse and, you know, we'll talk. So, I'm like, all right. And at the time, I was working at a, a silk screen shop, cleaning screens. Um, and my mom hooked me up with the job. And then I go in, and it's Keith... He's like, all right, you're going to go talk to Fausto. And again, I have no idea who Fausto is, bro. And here's this dude with a mustache, <laughs> looking like a, like a Guido kind of like. Car salesman. Car salesman. Dude's like a smuggler. <laughs> you know, dudes with those kind of mustaches in SF, you're kind of like, I don't know. You know what I mean? 
But he's like, all right, so we want you to be the team manager for venture. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Your trucks suck. And I just sat there looking at him. He's like, well, what if we can change the truck? I was like, if we can change the truck and I can make them magnesiums. Oh, nice. And he's like, we could probably do that. I'll look into it. And he's like, well, well, you know, where do you, what, what, are you, what are you doing for work now? I was like, oh, I work at a silk screen shop, whatever. And I was like, and he's like, all right. He's like, I mean, granted, this is 19, end of 89. He tells me that I'm going to make like, I think it was like 350 bucks a week. Mm. And that's more than I'm making at the, at the screen shop. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk out. I'm like, yo, I'm the, t-. and I, I think it's Solomon. Maybe it was Solomon, Spencer Fujimoto, and I, maybe Jason Adams was there, or maybe Shaman Dole. I don't remember. It was the San Jose guys, because I, me and Mike used to always hang out the San Jose guys. They used to stay at the house all the time. I was like, you guys are all on venture if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you start putting yeah, I just started putting people on, bro. Nice. I was like, That's done awesome. deal, dude. And it was like, and then I was like, all right. So then I don't know how long it took to actually fix up the trucks, but... This is when Embarcadero was cracking. Like, we were the shit. Right. What did you do to fix up the truck? Change the whole design. And then the bolts, I remember, you moved them back, Yeah, I worked worked with Eric Swenson on redoing the truck. And I was like, look, here's a street shadow. You know, and the the geometry on the street shadow wasn't good. So he he had these tech dudes that could go in and they they redid redid the geometry. So I wrote a couple samples. And then... um, then it was like, I took uh, Mike Chernaski's model of sponsoring a lot of people, right? So I wanted it everywhere, right? But being the team manager for his truck company, it's just like if you're a team manager for a wheel company, you got access to every pro. And different board companies. And people. different board companies, clothing yeah. companies, everybody. Yeah. I'm just, I can get everybody, right? So then... I'm going in and I'm starting to sponsor people and I'm going to Embarcadero and I'm like, okay, Shelby Woods is on the team. Sam Smythe's on the team. You know, everybody that I wanted on the team, I was trying, starting to get. And Your then, brother? Nah, this oh. is the funny one. Okay. My brother's already on Indy. <laughs> oh. And Fausto's like, you can't get your brother on this team because Fausto, even though he owned, <laughs> owned part of Indy, <laughs> was always pissed because, you know, Novak and all those other yeah. dudes, they had a weird deal where... I don't want to get into their prison shit, but whatever. Their, anyway, their deal when, when, and, great, and, when, yeah. and when you're doing this sponsoring people, and then uh, was the questionable video already out? Because that's that's like the video, like the big heavy hitter. I don't. Video. I think it's before questionable. Okay, oh, questionable so might have came out in like Eight, 1989. Was it nine? The first Plan B video. I think it was 1989. I don't know. Okay, I don't remember. But anyway, I'm not good with time. Yeah. Anyway, but. Anyway, so with my brother, Fausto was trying to get me to get on. I couldn't get him on. And then finally, it was like, okay, we're going to redesign the truck again. Right? Because at first, it was, I did, uh, I think they were called V6s or V8s. And then it was like, okay, this is when text sticks getting came in. I'm like, I want a oh, lower truck. Yes, lower truck. And I want the, tr- I want the bolts drilled back. Because me and Javante and a couple other heads start drilling our holes back. Turns out, I don't know if Javante got it from the Gons or what. I started drilling the holes back. That, and, and that's so then when no slides. Well, you're doing slides, no slides, no slides, bolts. tail slides. You're not grinding your bolts off. Yeah. Bolts are slipping off. Oh, yeah. That's so, changed the game, dude. So well, this is how bad this got. So the funny part is this is where everybody started calling me a disruptor because I came in and we did this and all the wood shops were pissed. Because all the bolts because were Because their way? jigs had to go for the old <laughs> whore pattern. They had to make new jigs and they were like, oh, well, sorry. <laughs> Deal with it. But the design of that truck came, um, Rick Blackheart, the original guy on Indy, had designed this thing. It was called a liquid truck or something. And it had like this, you know how the the bottom of the Venture base plate has that hole in it? Mm -hmm. Where he had a hanger with a bunch of weird holes in it in the the base plate. So I think Eric took the idea from Rick to do the hole in the base plate, drilled the holes back like I wanted. And then I was like, okay, let's cut into the actual hanger. So it looks like the, the way it looks now. Mm, like the Venture, yeah. Yeah, the V, right? So then that all evolved. And then it was finally like my brother and all these guys were like, fuck, dude, these are actually good. So I was able to get my brother and a bunch of the other guys. And it was just like, it just, you just it took off, fucking, bro. Yeah. But the this is the fucked up thing is, I think's already going. As soon as I get 
a paycheck from Think, my paycheck from Venture gets taken away from me. Oh, you can't double dip. I'm like, I'm doing two different jobs. Oh, because it's the same company. No, no, no it wasn't. Way. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the same company. Would, Venture's it. under Ermaco, which is Thunder Indie Venture. Think is its own identity. And at the time, we were our business corporation was called Real Deal Incorporated. Okay. Right. This is before Street Corner. Okay. Right. So Fausto was like, "You can't double dip." I'm like, "Fucking, what are you talking about? You're double dipping all the. You got Thrasher, you got Indie <laughs> Thunder Ventures, <laughs> Deluxe, <laughs> Street Corner, like, you know, whatever." But anyway, so there was got it got all weird. But I was like, "I'm 19, dude. I'm like, whatever." So, you know, then I just started flowing, man. It was fun, you know, and it was. I don't know. I mean, think. Who were who the first skateboarders that you had on Think? Uh, Shaman Dolly, Sam Smythe, Carl Watson, and Jason Adams. And it was going to be all oh my AMs. God. And then, then when Mike Kepper got let go of or quit A Street, I, I fucking was like, oh, my God, I got to get this dude. I just called him up, and I was like, Mike, you want to ride for Think? He's like, yeah, dude. I don't remember what the exact conversation was, yeah. but I was like, oh, my God, dude, I just got Mike Kepper. Because I saw Mike Kepper at that Arizona contest, and he's New York, bro. Yeah. I was like, this is like the mini version, not, a, not a disrespect to him, but like a similar version of Mike V. And for me, Mike V was like... Oh, hell yeah. That was my dude. That was who I looked up to. Him and Nottis and Gons, obviously, but Mike V was like, here's the dude. So, I don't know, it just kind of evolved and... Then it was like from Mike Kepper, then it was just evolved into, you know, a bunch of different heads throughout the years. I mean, the only, the first person I ever sponsored off a video of a sponsor me video was Scott Johnson. Scott Johnson. Wow. wow. Scott oh, yeah, Johnson, dude. Thing. Yeah, dude. I was like, holy shit, this kid, dude. And most of his footage in Partners in Crime is all a sponsor me video. Wow. You know? Was Think yours? Did you start Think? Think it was, was me and Keith Cochran. Okay. Well, how that how that even happened was Keith came to me with Fausto and said, "You you know, we want to know if you want to do your do a brand, do our okay. own, do your own skateboard company." And I was like, "What?" Or be a part of a company or whatever. And they're yeah. like, "Yeah," and it was going to be called Move. And I was like, "All right." So I started drawing logos because I, well, I used to be in a I used to went I went to San Francisco Art Institute for graphic design. Nice. I dropped out because of Think because I was like, okay, I'm either going to stay in school or I'm going to go make money. I yeah. dropped out of school because of Think too. So. <laughs> <laughs> we have similar yeah, stories man. there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting stories over here. Skateboarding will do that to you. <laughs> but yeah, so I think they, they, they got it. On, they just, I started doing logos for that. And then we had a meeting with Sam Smythe, Nick Lockman, um, Carl Watson. I think Jason was there. And all the little kids were like, move stupid. That's a dumb name. I was like, what do you mean? Move skateboards. You know, motion. And they're like, nah. And Nick Lockman looks down and he got this little group orange sticker that said think on it i think the eye was an eyeball or something you know the kind of like you see like boneless ripe yeah. tonight, those kind of things and i was like holy shit dude think skateboarding that's all we it, fucking do is think about skateboarding that's yep. the name and then like wow yeah then within um i don't know a day or two man ken mcguire who was a uh, one of the main guys over at thrasher fausto made him drops the logo that was where the original light bulb logo came in and then um one of the guys from TMF, I, th I wanted. To, I hope I get this right, man. At risk, I think his name is. Did the original tag logo, and after that, it was just like on. But I mean, originally, man, we were spray painting car boards with like car paint. And yeah, <laughs> it was it, dude. I mean, and then it just evolved, man. And it was like, at one point, we got like Mark Abelo came in with like Mike Santa Rosa and Eric Ricks, and we had those dudes. And then it those evolved. are all Santa Barbara heads. Santa right? Barbara heads, yeah, you know, Eric and. Eric Ricks grew up by me. Rad. He was a Hawthorne dude. Rad. And, but he rode, I think, Am for Powell. Mm hmm And then went to Think. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, and how Mark Oblo came in the mix was we were going to do a, a, we did race wheels with him. Mm. So it was originally a wheel company, but I think he was the whole idea. He's, he's smart, man. He, like, he's done with his, his whole career is bring his crew with him. So we were able to get those dudes, and then it was like, then eventually it was, I don't know, you know, it was like Matt Pales, Dandra Hobo, Phil Shaw. How did you get, how did you find Phil? Phil came through Don Fisher. Okay. Don Fisher, I think, saw him down at, at, the, at the Palo Alto skate park. 
And at the time, Phil was like full Hesher, long hair, you know, he was skating, just ripping. And then it was like, I just went and saw him skate. And I was just like, oh, my God, dude. I've never seen anybody skate like this before. Vert, street, pool. Like, he was the ATV. And then I feel like with Phil, he was what sparked in me. We have to have an ATV team. Everybody's got to skate everything. Mm. You know, and that's the way it was pretty much for the most part. I mean, there's a few standouts that didn't skate vert, but it's like whatever, you know. You skated everything else. You skated Every, the everything ditches, else. the mini ramps, the pools. Everything. Yeah. Everybody ripped, man. And it was like full family style, you know, and it was like it was fun. We traveled the world together, you know. And then like you guys like Tim McKinney come in, you know, you come in. And it's just like, holy shit, dude. Now we're having fun. I remember I skated for Think for a bit. I got on through this sponsor me video and I was skating. And then I went and stayed at your house for a bit, skated San Francisco, got a little taste of that. And then for some reason, like, I don't know what happened, but I was young and I ended up fucking up somehow. And you wanted to ride for somebody else. Yeah, I wanted to ride for some other, like, <laughs> quit. shitty company. You went you, uh, like, skateboards or no, something. No, like, it was called Clean. Like Clean. I think because I, I made friends with Carl Watson and some of the Russian twins and, but they didn't put me on anyway, and then you guys found out and, bam I, I was, was done. pissed I was heartbroken Clean That's, I was heartbroken I was like God what a shitty move I made like yeah. what like I didn't think about that then, yeah. but I definitely think about it like nowadays like when you reflect on like choices like, that you've made and yeah. like things and I mean all, all everything happens for a reason yeah, but. I remember what happened is I, I think that fueled me to like get better and it was just all about progression for a while and I was my fucking best friend was Tim O'Connor and that's what he was all about. Mm -hmm. So I remember it was years later, maybe like f three years later, and I was staying with Dan Wolf because he lived down south, mm -hmm. down here with um, Reese Forbes, and I was staying with him because Tim was staying with him. I think Lance Dawes came down to, to skate with us and yeah. take photos. And he was, and we kind of got close. And I think he went back up north. And I don't know because I got a phone call from you mm -hmm. like a few days later going, hey, let's, let's, do this. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. And yeah. I was, and I remember being like, let me, let me talk, let me just take this in. And I asked him, they're like, what are you doing, dude? You got to call him back. And so I did that. And it was like one of those things where it's like either stay in college or, or, or go on fucking tour with things skateboards, a U.S. tour with things skateboards. That was that the <laughs> and, big one? Yeah. And, that, and that's when we went on the oh U.S. tour God, with Tim McKenney and everyone. Dude. That was insane, dude. There was three car loads, 15 passenger van, dance car, and another car. Dude, and it was nuts. 72 days, bro. Whoa, we did 40 days yeah, 72 in days, Sonic, man. Sonic Tour. Yeah. We did 40 days, 72. 72 days, dude. And thank God for Paul Zawanich. That dude, he became like co-team manager at the time, man. He fucking drove. His parents had him like some credit card, dude. Got his half price hotel card. So we would stay in these baller ass hotels, dude. Oh, crap. It definitely, it, it, it wasn't on the 70 Tour uh, because when I got back on, Phil Phil was died. Oh fuck! But it was another. It was uh, it was after that, after and, that and we did a U.S. tour, and okay. it was with, with Tim McKenney and oh yeah 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 Tim in the and band. Zach Martin and like oh, yeah. um you didn't Jake do a bunch of people you didn't do the seventy two I didn't do the seventy two oh the seventy two day, day one was Dang. insane yeah I lost my mind towards the end. Oh, you, totally. We were supposed to go to Woodward, and then the guy was like, "Oh, we can't come," and so we wound up staying in St. Louis. <laughs> for like a week and a half two weeks dude it was just insane i remember putting my headphones on and walking outside like some grand canyon like nature music like what the fuck i'm gonna kill these dudes like <laughs> oh. we had the clean guy room and then like the dirt dude room and i was like dan and all and matt and all the dudes are in the dirt guy room and i was just like this is driving me nuts man and then we got back you know and then i don't know how long it was <laughs> then you got on and then we had a lot of you know we had but with phil we could touch on that real quick, man. Like Phil, like you brought him up, that. man. Like he was one of the nicest, most intelligent, profound people I've ever met in my life, man. 
and me and him got really, really, really close. You know, he blew out his knee. I would drive him to Berkeley to go to fucking school, you know, and then Jake brought him in. He was going to groom him to be the next editor or whatever. And then it was weird, man. Like they were getting ready to go on that trip when he, when he passed away and Phil, I think it was Phil and Paul maybe stayed at my house the night before me and Phil had kind of got into this weird beef because I was pissed because I saw him starting to fucking do some shit he shouldn't have been doing. Right. And then I remember he woke me up in the morning. He's like, all right, we're leaving. I'm like, all right, dude, I love you, man. He's like, I love you. And that was the last time I saw him. Damn. And then I find out, you know, a few days later, which is like, I think it was on Tony Vitello's birthday, bro. We're in the van. I mean, it was, it was like, right, cause it was right around my brother's birthday, August 23rd or something like that. And we're like getting ready to go on tour or something. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? And that was like the worst gut punch I've ever had in my life, man. I do just, I think we went back to the warehouse and I lost it. And I that's, that we should have shut down think then. Yeah. I remember that um, I heard that news and it, it broke me because he was a huge part of like when I, when I went and stayed with you and hung out. Like I think I stayed with him. F- yeah. For a bit, him and Dave Rosenberg, and like yeah. you know, I was you know, it was, it was heavy mind blowing man. watching him skate, and he was one of the nicest dudes and smartest dudes yeah. you would ever meet, and just always yeah. had your back, and that that was that that sucked. That that it was sucked, terrible. Man. It was devastating, and I, I remember taking his mom up to the cremation. Like we went to where he died, and then we went to like the cremation part shit. I was like, if I remember correctly, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, dude. And she was the nicest, sweetest person, man. So, but that's, that's, but then it evolved, man. I mean, we should have shut it down, but then it evolved. And then you got on, then Duffy gets on, and then it's like this resurgent. And then. There's a rebirth. There's a rebirth of it. Yeah. You know, and it's, right thing about Phil, man, there was one time my daughter was probably maybe a year, two years old. And I got her on my board. We're at Fort Miley skating around all of a sudden this like red shoulder hawk pops up actually no we weren't skating around i went up by myself first see her i mean i see this hawk and all of a sudden i'm like yo that's fucking phil oh dang and i'm like kind of getting it i'm not even like full spiritual like deep where i'm at now like but i have this conversation for like five minutes with phil and then my kid comes up and we're i'm rolling on the skateboard and i'm like yo this is insane what's happening to me right now. All these like little like it, the evolution of like becoming of who I am now, you know, dude, like it was wild. Dude, think about it. Like think skateboards, you, you and Keith and you being the te- team manager and one of the owners, like you discovered a lot of people and like changed their life. Thank you. Like for the better. Yeah. Well, through venture trucks, and I still got people hitting me up, man. Like, yo, dude, you fucking sent me boxes of trucks so I could eat. I was like, yeah, because I know what it's like. Uh-huh. You know, but like, yeah, I mean, if you pick up a magazine from 1991 till 2002, the majority of the people in those magazines were on ventures. The majority of those people were people that inspired me to actually, like, become who I am, you know? And to see where a lot of these guys are at now, it's like holy shit, dude! Like dude, you, dude. There was there was like some points where like I I would think about it when I got when I went back to think when I, um, and I was like on a team with like the butcher, yeah, Pat dude. Duffy, Jake Nunn, <laughs> Danny Dan, Flanzolita, Dandra Hobel, Danny Wade Flanzolita. Spire, Dandra yeah. Hobel, like. Yeah. This was a powerhouse team. Like, the skate demos would be insane. Jesse yeah. Pius, dude. Jesse Pius. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it was crazy. Remember we, went to, remember, remember we went to Japan? Didn't you go to Japan? Yeah, with I us? went to Japan. With me and Jake Nunn? <laughs> yeah. These dudes, there's a funny one, but these dudes are like, we're, like guys, we're, we're, I don't know where we were, man, in the middle of nowhere. And this guy's like, oh, yeah, it's a delicacy, raw chicken. I'm like, don't eat that shit, bro. <laughs> the next day, we're at a demo. This dude and Jake Nunn are like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like can't skate. Got salmonella, dude. Like <laughs> that was crazy, man. Yeah, Not so Japan. much fun, man. So many good times, dude. What's one of the uh, 
funniest memories you'll always remember. Like that that story is pretty funny, the Japan one. But what's one that you always remember being somewhere or doing something with Punch that you always look back and you're like, I can't believe we did this or, you know, this is the funniest thing. There's a funny, it's funny, but it's also crazy. Okay. So we're Vancouver mm. at the main contest. Slam, Slam, City. Jam. Slam City Jam. Yeah. And we're going out to clubs and there's one night where we're at some club and I'm like, yeah, I got to get out of here, man. I can't hang with this. And I was, I was, it was like up. a big skateboard party. Yeah. yeah. Skateboard party. And we're hanging out. Everybody's getting drunk or whatever. I'm not drinking at the time. I'm outside, and here comes Punch. <laughs> Two blondes on either side, and I'm yeah. like, Yo, you're not the him. only one, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Yo, look at this dude, right? And then, out of nowhere, there's some dudes come up, and they start talking shit to Punch. Yeah, because they were his checks. They were like, okay, his they're pissed off. They're right. like, whatever. His, his yeah, they're pissed off. They come on to you know, arm and arm with these girls and whatever, and then. I think Kenny Hughes is it's me, Kenny Hughes, and Reese Forbes are all hanging out. And Kenny says something to the dude. And the dude's like, I don't know, man. He's not that tall, but he's fucking a fire hydrant. Okay. And Kenny pops off to the dude, and dude goes, and Drop Kenny him. drops. And I'm like, Big, big Kenny Hughes. I'm like, dude. Yo, this oh, is not going to be good. No. And then Reese comes over. <laughs> Reese Forbes, <laughs> yeah. big guy. Another yeah. big dude, bigger than me. Bam, he gets dropped. And I'm like, Okay, it's on. I'm fighting like five dudes. And I'm fucking yelling Greg. to all the fucking dudes. Vallely style. You're going Vallely style. <laughs> here's, here's all these skateboarders <laughs> surrounding us. And I remember looking over like, you fucking pussies, help me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? And next thing you know, I'm on the ground. I'm balled up. And thank God, dude, for a good brother of mine, Mike Nelson. And I can't remember the dude's name. I'm so, I'm sorry, man. I'm blanking on this dude. He used to work yeah. for Transworld another big dude they start coming up and they're yanking people off me and i I stood up and i look over and i'm like fucking help me and here comes chefy oh and I'm like, yes, yes now it's on dude so then me and chef are just <laughs> <laughs> right and then the dudes these guys must have been like hockey players they were definitely they weren't skateboarders yeah, yeah. they were not skateboarders bro these yeah. dudes they don't have guns there they don't do was it like martial there. arts it was like fucking scrapping straight up dude. scrappers dude these that, dudes knew how to box that's good. hockey that's hockey <laughs> they, so they drop we you know these dudes disperse and i you know and i i, I got a cut on my eye i'm all bloody and this dude walks up to me with this like leather bomber coat he's like dude i took this off one of those guys bro i was like i don't need this dude go give it to a home <laughs> person man <laughs> you know and then we're on tour the rest you know i got a black guy i'm wearing sunglasses and he's like oh dude what happened to you bro i was like oh, i fell in vert rent yeah and one of the things that we talked about in an episode with brad is like like when two like when girls like grab you as a little person yeah like it's definitely like a fetish thing or a bucket list thing or something you go yeah yeah so i'm like with the two <laughs> girls i'm like i, yeah, this, I like, get some this punch. is happening dude. yeah of course. heck yeah Duh. bro i remember even seeing lee smith and he would because he was at that yeah. contest too and he had two girls too <laughs> oh yeah dude i was like yeah dude slam city jam was it was one it was a trip i, I don't know because i guess we got accents you know so the canadian chicks up there all yeah. about their skateboarders and this is when skateboarding started getting cool and everybody want to hang out with skateboarders or whatnot but well, that was a big contest too though yeah, like dude, i remember crazy, going man. i think we did it like maybe twice or three times we went we would go to slam city jam as a team enter the contest and then we would do a tour tour yeah. we would do a tour throughout can it was so much that fun was because so much fun dude. they were some of the first places to have public skate parks everywhere yeah. like cement skate yeah. parks yeah. everywhere where they weren't around like how they are now here yeah. in california did, that, yeah, dude, you just gave me a good memory, man. Like, there was one contest, and I don't forget what bowl it was, dude, and we're all skating. <laughs> and all of a sudden, dude, here comes the shorties van. Uh, right? And Muska gets out. He's got his boom box, dude. And <laughs> thousands of kids <laughs> mob this guy. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? This is like the Christian Asoy of the fucking oh, yeah, 2000s, dude. bro. He was. And he he's was. like smoking weed. And I'm like, yo, oh my well, God. Well, weed was dude. legal there, too. Yeah. In Canada. Like, like, this so. is amazing, dude. Look at this kid, bro. And then you watch, look at his career, dude. Like, yeah. you know, amazing, man. Like, there's so many good times, man. I mean, but this dude hanging out the house, just having fun, man. Like, the funny part is, like, I think we were in, was the one we lived with, I lived with Dave the cop. We were, in, we were up in Dude, Petro Hill. He lived with a badass detective cop. 
Yeah, like just, just so yeah. big. Uh, we can get into that. That's some funny stuff too, man. But yeah, th- I remember one time I got out of my bedroom and here's Ponch with a sh- towel on, got out of the shower and he's like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and Dave was like, how long is these dudes going to live with us? Because it was like him and the butcher, you know, Diego Bucheri yeah. or something like that. And he's like, I was like, oh, dude, all right, bro, you guys got to leave, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, your buddy Dave like pulled some of the hottest chicks I've ever seen, like yeah. the hottest black chicks I've ever seen, like these yeah. models. I would wake up and they would be like in the bathroom, like leaving, you know, and I'm like, who's that? Like, yeah. oh, yeah. that's one of Dave's chicks. One like, of the best dudes on the planet, shit. man. He just retired. Oh, really? Yeah, finally, man. I think it was like 20 I always 20 felt years. like when I see these cops, like, nowadays, like, you know, oh, I'm like, what are you going to do? If, you know, like, and but with Dave, I never felt like that. This dude was <laughs> like a specimen. Like, yeah, dude. built like LeBron James, but yeah. white. Not yeah. quite bi- as big, but. Like, like just, super gnarly, like black belt and a bunch of different things. I'm seafood, like, this like is what a stuff. cop should be yes. like, dude. Like, I, I, first I detail was up in Patrol Hill in the, in the in not in Patrol Hunters Point, dude. Like the gnarliest spot in California. Oh, and Hunters he's got Point graveyard shift. I remember oh, I got wow. pocket checked yeah. at Hunters Point. Yeah. You know what pocket check yeah, is? They just come up and they just they, they, yeah they, they did that and oh, I was yeah. like, They're take like, it, dude. When yeah, we, when take we were, my dollar. Yeah, dude. When we were kids, we're at the dish skating. My dad drove us up there. Was my brother's birthday or something. All these dudes come up from the hood, and they're yelling, fuck yeah, like going off. And I'm like, dad, get in the car now. And my, and my, my dad borrowed my mom's uh, truck at the time, and he's like, what's going on? I'm like, get in the car. <laughs> and then, like, all of a sudden, dude, the bottles start coming in, and they start hitting with us pipes. And I remember throwing my buddy in the car, and I look back, and I just kicked this dude in the chest, and I got in my <laughs> drive, drive, drive. And he's like, oh, like full movie style. Yeah. <laughs> and a bottle, he, this dude threw a bottle through the passenger windshield. My brother had put his board up. Got, oh, a, wow. got glass everywhere on the freeway cops come they're like i'm like we're going to the hospital and the cops like escorted us to the hospital my brother had all the like shards of glass in him i was oh, like damn and we used to go to the, we used to go up there like every weekend take the bus dude. yeah yeah that that was one thing like, like when i lived in san francisco and because i didn't we i didn't have a car i would stay with the homies or stay with greg yeah and if i if i wanted to go to uh to to think to think you had to take the bus into uh, through Hunter's Point. Yeah, dude, it was sketchy, and then bro. and then because it was in that's yeah, where it was. Yeah. That's where Thrasher yeah. is. That's yeah. where everything is. Yeah, the thing sketchy. is, with, with, I think the reason why they actually got down there, man, because the rent was cheap. Oh hell yeah, dude! It was on like Ermico was on the naval base. Yeah. Right? So this check this out, dude. This is crazy. So it's on the naval base. There's one morning it rained. I go out like you walk out of where our building was and you go out to where the the refinery is for the trucks and there's like green like neon green shit coming out of the ground bro jesus i'm like yo what the fuck is this that's i look <laughs> over and there's hazmat you know those that's huge South barrels Korea shit right there dude. and i'm like call up to the front i'm like yo you guys got some hazmat stuff I'm like oh yeah we'll get to it no problem that's why they 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 sprayed the u.s i think it's uss enterprise all the nuclear waste shit off there they just sprayed it with sand put it into a pile and put chain link fronts with, with plywood around it. And that started leaking. Yeah, bro. All and then, and then check this out. So this is a trip. So we didn't know. I didn't realize how bad it was, man. Then I started doing research. This is probably like 1994. We moved warehouses. I was like, let me go online, the environmental stuff. It's, you know, that movie, Ann Brockovich? Yeah. It's that, it's that refinery right there is what she's trying to go against in that mm. movie, right? So I'm like, and it says all the different toxic waste around the whole place, right? And I'm like, holy shit, dude, this is insane, right? And then fast forward, I'm, I, I get a job doing energy work in, in this clinic in Hunter's Point in 2011 or 12. And a woman comes in, she's got this hard rock stomach. And I'm like, where do you live? She's like, oh, I live here, Bayview. I was like, you drink the water? She's like, yeah, of course. I'm like, you cook with the water. She's like, yeah. I'm like, you shower in the water. She's like, yeah, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, oh, my God, man. It was just like the toxic stuff just built up in her gut, bro. Oh, wild wow. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, highest, highest birth defects, highest asthma, highest cancer, like all kinds of shit. Yeah. Damn. So, anyway, you know, that's kind of a tangent. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, um, you want to get into this? What, what it, so, now it, what you do is holistic spiritual healing. I guess you can call it that. Is that uh, well? That's what it said on your Instagram. Oh uh, 
Yeah, well, yeah, that's what it says on Instagram. I don't know. I, I just got back on Instagram recently. Okay. But, yeah, so how that all came in, like, ever since I was a kid, I've always had this I, abilities to feel what was going on. Like, I knew my mom was pregnant before my mom knew she was pregnant. I told my aunt, oh, I'm going to have a little brother. You know, she's like, what? It's called my mom. She's like, I don't I don't know. I'm not pregnant. Next thing you know, here's my brother. You know, and I didn't know about what, what this was, but being an it's called being an empath. So I could feel other people's stuff. So the majority of my life, all the depression, all the, the sadness, all the f fear, all the fight in me was other people's energies. Mine, but also other people's energies. So then I go through these experiences and in, to make a long story short, in October 31st, 2009 is when we shut down Empire. And right now, I want to acknowledge Justin Williams. I love that dude. That dude is one of the best dudes I love on the you. planet. I love Justin Williams. I too. feel so fucking bad that he lost so much fucking money on Empire. And I'm just, I pray what to was, God someday was, he gets it back, man. What was Empire? It was a, uh, my last distribution company was with Justin, uh, Joy Surreal, Bruce Rodella, Brian Coons. Got it. Yeah. So anyway, we shut that down. I go through identity crisis. I'm fucking. This is. I'm shattered, dude. This, this is. is yeah. That's. Uh, this is what I wanted yeah, to get yeah. to. Like, because you went from like this whole skateboard. Yeah, world skateboard world. To dude, just like, a complete. Yeah. So 180. October 31st, shut it down. I'm freaking out. I don't have, you know, and there's other shit that I'm not going to talk about to today, but that fucked me up because of the skateboard industry and people in the industry backstabbing and slandered my name and all this other shit that was all lies. Anyway, so. Empire shuts down. I go to San Francisco. I'm sitting on this log every day going, okay, oh my God, dude, I have no idea who I am. And I was just, I started praying. I was like, who the fuck do you want me to be? I don't, this is the first time in my adult life I don't have a brand attached to my name. It's not Greg from Think. It's not Greg from Venture. It's not Greg from this, this, this. It's not Greg from Diamond. It's not Greg from nothing. I'm just like, oh my God. And I was like, all right, who do you want me to be? And all I would get every day was just be yourself. Be myself. I, mean, I don't have no idea, man. My whole identity was skateboarding. So I go in full identity yep. crisis for a whole fucking month, man. You know what? I felt the same way when, when skateboard was done for me. <sighs> I, I had no idea Dude, who I was. Devastating. Friends. I changed my number because the creditors were coming after me because <laughs> of everything that happened with Empire. And I was like, done. And then finally one day I go home and uh, my then girlfriend at the time, she's like, same thing i was like yeah she's like well it's pretty obvious i was like what do you mean she's like you just need to help people i was like what she's like you got this life coaching company you're not even doing anything with it with kevin Sturt event do that and i was like holy shit duh so within a month i had a website super generic up on tumblr and i blasted out an email to you know the industry of course people want to talk shit you know whatever and i'm like whatever but i get a phone call from the creative visual director from Hurley, Joseph Whitmarsh, old school friend of mine. I uh, knew him through Gerard Secretario. He's also just amazing human. He's like, dude, sign me up. I was like, holy shit, this is it. So that snowballed. I started working with people, started doing consulting, worked with a bunch of brands, doing consulting. And then August 6th, 2010, get the phone call that my mom's husband killed himself meet up with my mom i lose all my clients i get on fucking welfare bro for a year and a half i got what, people why is that and it was just what? because all my clients are gone i'm living in my childhood home with my mom because my mom's got dementia got it got it got it she's a drug addict she's an alcoholic are you get, with your girlfriend there now i'm married now i got my six-month-old daughter who I move into this house and that's a whole nother fucking crazy scenario but yeah. anyway so I lose everything bank account my house in the hills my car my money everything gone I'm on fucking welfare I was like oh my god dude how did this happen then you're a good person dude like I don't understand why something like that watch happen. dude it's fucking boot camp I talked about clearing the house now I'm now I'm going to ceremonies uh, except it was November of 2009 i go to my first ayahuasca ceremony i'm like fucking boom oh my god dude this and it saved my life next thing you know 
we sell the house in in Sacramento. I'm already doing energy work. I'm doing. I got I got initiated into like different ceremonial things, and then I get a phone call. Hey, dude, I'm, I sold the house in San, in Daly City. I moved to Sacramento because my then wife wanted to start a business. When, when you say initiated into ceremonial things, what does that mean? It means you got to meet with elders. They pick. They basically find you. They pick you, and they say, "Okay, you you have this in you." come with us right to help someone to help me to like i'm like i don't know what the fuck is going on like i went to this woman i basically sat at this table one day and the woman sitting across me is like oh i'm an art therapist everybody else is from the movie industry or whatever and i'm like what the fuck is art therapy she's like starts telling me the story about how she worked with kids and they do art and i'm like all right long story short she's telling me she's working with this kid who's Eight years old, and his dad died. He stopped talking. Right then, I'm hooked. My dad didn't die, but my dad, in my mind, left when I was eight. So I was like, okay, what happened? She's like, I don't know. It was a trip. One day, I'm sitting there drawing with his kid, and this white bubble comes over us, and the kid starts talking. In this restaurant, dude, in North Beach, in San Francisco, the shit happened to me. All my abilities come back on. So I'm thinking I'm having a psychotic break, bro. I'm seeing things, feeling things, hearing people's voices in their heads. And I'm like, this is insane. I'm like freaking out. My friend Maga was with me and she's like, you okay? I was like, no, I got to go get up, leave, call up my friend. She tells me to meet up with this lady down in Tustin. So I, I'm like, I don't think I could drive. Go down, drive, boom, boom. Meets this lady. She's like, you have no idea how fucking psychic you are, do you? I'm like, what? It's like, you need a teacher. I was like, teacher, what's that? You got school for this shit? <laughs> Stay, stay with her for from 4.30 in the afternoon to 2.30 in the morning. She's like, all right, bye. I'm like, I look like this. I'm going to go back and tell my boys I'm a psychic. They're going to laugh at me. I go to step out her door. Energy turns around and says, can't you just be my teacher? She said, boy, when the fuck took you so long? All you had to do was ask. She set me off. Next thing you know, I'm hanging out. I'm going to ceremonies. Elders get me. Next thing you know, I'm doing more ceremonies. I get a call from my buddy. Hey, dude, I want to do this detox center down in mexico come down i'm like that's not my medicine that's african stuff he's like there's no ceremony to get people off of dope i go down there i start doing ceremonies to get people off of dope the person down there sees me she passes other kind of energy and medicine to me i do this stuff but now it's like i mean dude i work with anyone man rich people poor people doesn't matter man i take care of people all the time you know i don't know how detailed and how much time we got but it's heavy the stuff that I've been seeing, and I mean, I'm, I work with Navy SEALs. I work with black op people. I work with doctors. So when you say stars. you work with Navy SEALs, it, does that mean you're like helping them, like with the, the PTSD? Yeah, and PTSD all that stuff? stuff, but also just like psychological stuff, energetic stuff, clearing out their trauma, like helping to, like the work that I do now with my wife Shelby, is called brain body integration. It can clear trauma from the person's body without them having to even think about it. They don't got to do EMDR, EFT. They don't got to do talk therapy. It just swipes it. And they can think about it later on, but it doesn't have that, ah, uh, the anxiety. It's not debilitating anymore, yeah. you know? And I still work with a lot of addicts, you know? It's fun, man. I love what I do, you know? It's, sounds like that's this is what you were meant to do, man, like help people. It, it is, and it's something that I've been, or realized that I've been doing it my entire life. Yeah. Skateboarding set the stage, man. man. I feel the same way. I feel like I'm here to make people laugh. Fuck yeah. And you're good at it, dude. <laughs> That's medicine. That's, yes, yeah. Yeah. Laughter that, is one medicine. of the best medicines, man. For sure, man. And yeah. I love what I do, man. It's given me an opportunity to travel, to meet all kinds of different people, to do really good work, and to, to sit with people from all walks of life, man. It's profound. Like, people come in like, dude, I've been in talk therapy for 15 years. I'm here for three hours, dude. You just shifted everything. And I'm not saying that with the ego. I'm saying that humbly. Like, I love what I do. Yeah. I can see it. I love it's it, man. pouring out it's of you, It's fun, man. man. What do you think of, uh, was it weird when I called you up and I was like, hey, you want to be on the podcast? Me and Jason's podcast, <laughs> me and Wee Man's podcast. You're probably like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> when because of the history that me and this guy have had. I was actually like, wow, okay, these dudes sorted it out. That's good. <laughs> but I was psyched, man. I was like, yes, dude, of course. Anything I can do to support you, dude, because I look at it as like, you've done so much for me, man. Uh -huh. Anybody who's ever rode for me, whether it was a truck company, wheel company, board company, clothing company, whatever, 
you've helped me live my dream. So whatever I can do to contribute to you guys to help you guys bring your dream to fruition. Just I'm, to I'm just to kind of not clear the air, but just to let you know, like when when you left Think, every skateboarder on that skated for them was so bummed. Like so bummed. It was it it was heavy, man. It broke my heart, dude, yeah. to leave. But how that even happened was I told Fausto came at me when I was nineteen. And he talked shit to me. And I told him to his face, I said, don't you ever fucking talk to me like that again. I don't give a fuck who you are. I quit. And I walked out. And he chased me to my car. He apologized. I said, all right, cool. Shook his hand. November 22nd, 2002. He called Keith Cochran a couple days before, told him to come home from his honeymoon. And sat us down in his office and annihilated Keith. To the point where I was like, yo, dude, not for nothing, bro. If this dude was on the street, we would murk his ass right now. I don't give a fuck who this dude is. Went over to Keith's office afterward. We sat down. We were like, holy shit, this dude is out of his fucking mind. And he was, dude. He was losing. I don't know if he was bipolar or what. All due respect, I love Fausto. He was like a dad to me. He taught me I like Fausto game, a lot, dude. Too. He taught like- me how to stick up for myself. He's the reason why I am who I am on a lot of levels. But he came back over and he started yelling at us again. And he, <laughs> he's like, you don't know, you know what the fuck you're doing. You guys don't know how to fucking you know, run this shit. I was like, you're the one who made these decisions for the last fucking six months, dude. This is your fault. And he I was like, we're just two street kids who don't know shit. We made you millions. He's like, fuck you. And he slammed the door. And I looked at Keith. He said, oh, wow, dude. And he said, fuck you to me. Bye. Walked out. Went to my office. Grabbed my shit. Told Brian Coons, like, dude, pack my shit, bro. I'm out. And Wade Spire was in the office. I was driving him. He didn't even ride for us at the time. I think he wrote for Lucero. I was like driving him to the airport. My phone starts ringing. What are you doing, dude? Come back. I was like, nah, I'm done. Next morning, Gerard and I were at my house. Gerard was like, what are you going to do, bro? I was like, fuck, I don't know, dude. I feel like I'm having an anxiety attack. Next thing you know, I called my my travel agent. I went to Costa Rica. Went to Australia. See you later, Fausto. Nice. And within, what, three years, he he crossed over. And me, Keith, Thibaut, and Fish were all together in in uh, North Carolina at Reggie Barnes's place, but anyway, that was a heavy one to end this on, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs>